It's never heard like this before It feels this pain will never end Lord, I hope for so much more But now my life just keeps All right, people going in circles. That's the name of the song, Circles, right here on Guts, Gospel United Save, with Williams, Miles, and uh, Y-Pop, Chapter 1, or Y-P-O-P. And we do thank God for this group, and you can go on to the web if you'd like to find out more about them at William My William Miles, Y-Pop, William Miles, ypop.com and we thank God for William Miles and ypop chapter 1 in circles sometimes it feels like we're going in circles because we won't yield to the spirit of God but we need him to have control over our life we like making our own decisions but sometimes our own decisions leads us, lead us the wrong way we've got the wrong attitude about what we need to do so we gotta adjust our attitude and we thank God for talking about winning attitudes Right here on Guts, Gospel United Save. Bringing the information needed for transformation within South Florida and all over the world. A variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. Now, we're going to deal with some foundational truths about the construction of the attitude. We talked about constructing it. Now, some foundational truths about construction of the attitude. The air currents of life jolt us out of, the, out of line and try to keep us from achieving our goals. Unexpected weather can change our direction and strategy. We must adjust our thinking continually so that we can live right. Yeah, so we don't keep going in circles. We got to adjust. And that's a quote from John Maxwell. Now, before we look at specific things that help construct attitudes, we must understand that some basic principles about attitude formation. There's some basic principles about attitude formation and one is that a child's formative years are most important for instilling the right attitudes usually that's when children or when adults develop the attitudes that they have based on what they experienced as a child child specialists generally agree that early child development is a positive setting and a positive setting is a main reason for the child's future success Attitudes we accept as children are usually the attitudes we embrace as adults. It's hard to get away from our early training. It really kind of is. You know, Proverbs 22 and 6 says, Train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. And sometimes we don't think of it. We think of it as just uh, the kind of in, uh, education system that we give them. But even uh, the attitude training, it is whatever you put in them, that's the way that they're going to go. So if you put in the wrong attitude, the wrong uh, concept, and, and they will have the wrong idea. Why? Because the feel. The feeling and attitudes we form early in life become a part of who we are. We feel comfortable with them even though they might be wrong. They might not even be the right attitudes, but still we compensate. We accept it. We put into and we, we move and we continue to walk in the attitudes we learn. Even if our attitudes make us uncomfortable, they're still difficult to change, especially because if they've been molded from childhood, they're difficult to Change now. Difficult isn't impossible, and even if it is with man, all things are impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. Man may not be able to figure out how to work it out, but God can change even that which is impossible. So, uh, John Maxwell, during his senior year of high school, decided to teach himself to play golf, and for months he played incorrectly without, but with enthusiasm. He was he was enjoying playing. He just didn't play it right, and one day on the golf course a friend told him John your problem is that you are too close to the ball after you hit it so he had developed a slice that streaked like a banana through the sky no problem he just 
compensated for his slice to land the ball on the fairway. He aimed for the woods on the left. Then one day, he played with an excellent golfer. The ball went straight, and his swing was slow. After observing a few of his boomerang shots, uh, the pro or the better golfer offered help. What's wrong with my game? I asked, or John asked. And he explained everything. You're doing the whole thing wrong. So lessons began. And he found out after a few weeks that it's more difficult to learn something wrong, unlearn it, and relearn it than to learn it correct the first time. And that's certainly true about our attitudes. When we learn it wrong the first time, it's difficult to unlearn it and then relearn it. It's better to learn it right the first time. Those things which we feel and accept in an early age have a tendency to hang on tenaciously even when we know better and desire to change. The first impression upon our lives is, are not only impressions, but many times they are the most lasting. And attitudes growth never stops. That's the second thing we want you to know. Our attitudes are formed by our experiences and how we choose to react to them. Therefore, as long as we live, we are forming, changing, or reinforcing attitudes. There's no such thing as an unalterable attitude. We are like the little girl who has asked, was asked by her Sunday school teacher, Who made you? She replied, Well, God made part of me. What do you mean, God made part of you? Asked the surprised teacher. Well, God made the real little girl. And I just grow the rest myself. How true. The attitudes formed in our early years do not necessarily remain the same through latter years. And many times marriages go through deep waters because of a mate's attitude change. People sometimes even switch spouses in the middle of life because of an attitude change. John Maxwell's father has always been a positive influence on his life. Once while visiting his parents back east, he noticed he was reading Norman Vincent Peale's book, The Power of Positive Thinking, when he noted that his father had read the book previously, he replied enthusiastically, Of course, I must keep building my attitude. Well, I would go to point three, but we've got some things to do. We've got some changes to do. So tune in on a Friday and uh, listen up. And we'll be able to do that with you. We'll go over uh, the attitude, uh, the third one. And the third one is the more our attitude grows on the same foundation, the more solid it becomes. Now, that holds true for positive and negative attitudes. I know we like to always think it's just going to be about the positive attitude, but it, it holds true for both. And so we do thank God for you all tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. We hope that you will be encouraged, uplifted, uh, delighted, and that you would indeed have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. We're going to uh, close out a little bit and uh, share with you a couple of different uh, information that we hope that will be helpful to you. I'm Nikki V, and you are tuned in to Guts Gospel Not to Save. If you'd like to hang on, we're going to go to a Groundwork radio special, and we do thank God for that. And we hope that you will hang on and listen up and be attentive. The way to do that is you call 877-217-5375. That's 877-217-5375. Thank you all for uh, texting me and letting me know some of your prayer requests and some of the things that you all have in mind. The number to... Uh, place to text is 954-554-6755. That's 954-554-6755. And of course, you can always go on to gutsay.com and catch up with whatever you missed. And we thank God for that. Uh, if you'd like to friend us, friend us on Facebook at Nikki V Guts. And if you'd like to follow us, follow us at Nikki V1520. Thanks so much again for tuning into the broadcast. And we hope that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. Until next time, this is Nikki V. And you keep it real and keep it in line for Jesus Christ is a sure foundation and on that men can build on. Until next time, this is Nikki V. Have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. This is Walk the Way. I'm Jeff Klein. What kind of church do you long for? We just asked this question at our church. Here are some of the answers. Raw, authentic, genuine vulnerability. Diversity, economically, racially, and socially. People at Jericho Road long to serve the world intentionally and to be spirit-filled, Christ-centered disciple-makers. 
They long for passionate, exciting joy, intergenerational relationships, and challenging accountability. How about you? What kind of church do you long for? We're wrestling with this a lot at my church. But as much as I want to understand the kind of church we all, you all long for, it's so clear to me the kind of church Jesus himself longed for. One that preaches good news to the poor, proclaims freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, and releases the oppressed. And one that makes disciples of this way of life, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. How does your church measure up? Let's talk church on Facebook.com slash walk the way. Gospel United to Save. It's the Guts Gospel Show. A variety talk show with a Christian view. With your host, Nikki B. Featuring open discussion, event spotlight, and special guests. Tune in weekday for the midday show at 3.30 p.m. The Guts Gospel Show. A variety talk show with a Christian view. With your host, Nikki B. Right here on this station. This commercial is sponsored by Rhythmic Gospel Network. Fifteen twenty AM WEXY Wilton Manors, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. A service of Multicultural Broadcasting Incorporated. Jesus Christ International Ministries presents seventh annual convocation, November fifth through the seventh, and then on the eleventh, two thousand and twelve. The theme. God's grace brings good moral character. Live in it. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 7 through 9. Romans chapter 6, 12 through 13. When? November 5th through the 7th at 730. 